Hey guys, it's Miss Fatty here in Seattle, Washington. I first want to say that I'm so excited that you're here to join me to learn some science today. Over the last couple of weeks, I've really missed getting to teach science and see my students. And I know that your teachers feel the same. The unit we're going to start with today is called Populations and Resources. It's one of my favorite life science courses that we do. And that's because it's all about studying living things like animals and plants. I love animals and have a pet dog at home who's been keeping me company named Shep. Let's figure out what we need for our lesson today. What you're gonna need today is a pencil or pen and some paper. It can be lined or blank, just something that's lying around the house. Something that's optional, but I really recommend is for you to pause the video right now and go and see if there's somebody that you can check in with over the next 20 to 25 minutes. This could be a sibling, a parent or guardian, or maybe you're able to message or text one of your friends to talk and share your ideas about what we're studying in the next little bit. If you have access to the internet, I really encourage that you log on and open up Amplify as we are gonna be using some of their tools today in our, uh, in our lesson. In a moment, we are gonna be watching a video and be introduced to a type of scientist that we're gonna be working with over the next few weeks. This scientist is called an ecologist. This is somebody who studies interactions of organisms with one another and their environment. When I say organisms, I mean living things like animals and plants, the specific type of organism that this scientist studies are called jellyfish or jellies. Lots of people call jellyfish by that name, even though many people don't know that they're not actually a fish. The scientist that's studying these moon jelly populations has noticed something about them in the previous weeks. As you're watching the video, I really encourage you to listen carefully to what she has observed about the moon jelly populations and also why she thinks it's so important to study different populations of organisms. My name is Dr. Kelly Robinson and I am a marine ecologist who specializes in jellies. Jellies are one of the oldest animals on the planet. In fact, they've been around for over 500 million years. The term jellies actually encompasses a wide number of animals that are representatives from several major groups. There can be a lot of different shapes, sizes, and colors. I love studying jellies because they're beautiful and also mysterious. There is so much to learn about their ecology and what the role in the ecosystem is. So as an ecologist, I go out on the field, on the boat, and I sample organisms in the ecosystem. I also bring them back in the lab to do experiments. And then I take what I learned there and I put them into ecosystem models. An ecosystem is made up of both living and non-living parts. As a marine scientist, I look at how the physical, chemical, and even geological factors affect the living organisms within that ecosystem, as well as interactions among them. So jellies are a natural and important part of our marine ecosystems. Jellies are both prey, meaning they are food for other organisms, as well as predators, meaning that they eat other organisms. Jellies are a food item for sea turtles. Another role that jellies play is that jellies consume a wide variety of animals, but mostly they're eating zooplankton. Zooplankton are free-floating animals that tend to be microscopic. In ecosystems, populations interact with each other, and this can actually form a very intricate web of populations all connected to one another. What this means then is when we see changes in one population, this can have an effect or an impact on several other populations within the ecosystem. We have records of changes in jelly populations from many different areas and from many different times. So it's very important for us to focus on what's driving these changes in jelly populations for a specific ecosystem. When jellies exhibit a sudden and rapid increase in their population numbers, they can become clumped together or very densely packed where individuals are very close to one another. In order to understand why we're seeing sometimes 
sudden increases in the population size of jellies. We need to have a better understanding of their role in the ecosystem as well as the impact of other populations on them. So if you're interested in jelly ecology, I would encourage you to think about becoming a marine scientist who specializes in jellies. We always need more scientists because if we have more scientists, then we can collect more data. And by doing that, we can get a much better understanding of the role that they play in our ocean ecosystems. Wow, I really enjoyed hearing from her about what she loves to study in the moon jelly population. It seems really cool that she gets to go and work outside, but also gets to study science in the lab. This seems like it would be a really great job for people that love to do both. As she was giving us some information about what she studies, I heard her use this word population. What she means here is a group of organisms that are the same type living in the same area. If we take a look at this image over here, we see that there are many, many moon jellies all in one area together. She also mentioned something called an ecosystem. This is just all of the living things and non-living things in a particular area. So if we take a look at this image, we can see that there's many different types of fish in this ecosystem. There's plants and coral. There's also the water. All of these things interact with one another and have an effect on each other. As you might have heard in the video, the scientist that we heard from has noticed that in the last few weeks, there have been a dramatic increase in the size of the moon jelly populations in the Arctic Ocean. In a moment, I want you to pause your video and think about why this might be happening. What is causing the size of the moon jelly populations to increase so quickly? If you have a pen and paper, I really encourage you to write or draw out your ideas about what is happening. When you're ready, let's continue. Hopefully you had some time to think about what your ideas are for what's going on with these moon jellies. If you need to go back and replay the video one more time, go ahead and do that. Pay special attention to what Dr. Robinson is telling us about the moon jellies and the organisms they interact with. You may also have heard about moon jellies before, or perhaps other things that live in the sea. And that might help you to think about what could be occurring to our moon jelly populations. You might also have heard some current events about things that are occurring in our ocean and seas, or about other populations of organisms that are experiencing large increases or decreases in their population sizes. I really encourage you to take a moment to think about if you can add anything else to your initial thoughts. If you feel like you need to learn a little bit more about the ecosystem where the moon jellies live, you can read the article, The Arctic Ecosystem, to learn more about other populations there. If you haven't already, what I would like you to do now is pause that video and go and find that person that you are able to chat with about your ideas. Whether that's a friend or family member, go and share what your thoughts are at this moment. Do they agree with you? Do they disagree with you? Do they have any ideas that you want to add on to yours? That's totally okay. When you're ready, please continue with the video. I hope you get some good feedback. So here is our task for the next few weeks. We are gonna be working as student ecologists to investigate why there has been this mysterious increase in the size of the moon jelly populations in the Arctic Ocean. I'm really excited to work with you and undergo some different evidence collection moments to figure out what is going on with these moon jellies. Right now, it would be really difficult to be able to go and look at the moon jelly populations in their actual native ecosystem. Because of this, it will be really helpful for us to be able to use a digital model to study these ecosystems. Amplify has a digital model that we can use called the Populations and Resources Sim. If you have access to Amplify or the internet, I want you to pause this video for a moment and make sure that you can get to the digital model. 
If not, no worries at all, just continue on with the video and follow along with me. The first thing I want you to do is get to figure out what we can do in this digital model. What are the different buttons allowing us to do? What did you notice that you can change? Is there any evidence we can collect or data that we can look at to help us understand what happens with populations? To start off, we're gonna make sure that we are in the intro three populations version. Go ahead and take a few minutes to look around and play the video again when you're ready to move on. I hope you got to see some different aspects of the digital model. The first thing you probably noticed was there's this great area in the middle where we can see lots of different organisms interacting. On the side, there's a little pullout button where you can take a look at the different types of organisms in the digital model. You can see the number of organisms in a population and add or minus from these organisms. You can lock in different amounts of organisms to see how that affects the ecosystem. You can track different activities or even click on individual organisms to track what they're doing. You might have also noticed a button at the bottom left hand corner called the food web overlay. If you go ahead and click the food web overlay, it brings up this onto your screen. You'll notice that we can now see some interactions between the different organisms with these arrows. I also noticed that there were these orange numbers that seem to be different than the population size numbers. These are the energy storage molecules for each population. We're gonna have to look into how that affects population changes over time. The last thing that I noticed was there is another image that you can see in the digital model called Analyze. If we click here, in the Analyze screen, we can see a graph that allows us to see the different populations and what they're doing over time. You can scroll and select the button along the bottom to figure out exactly what's going on at certain points in time. You also have this, this data table on the side that gives you again the population numbers and some changes in the births and deaths as uh, the, the digital model goes on. There's also an icon at the top that allows you to look at details for any changes you might have made to the ecosystem throughout your simulation. So let's get started with our first task. To really understand why populations change, we need to understand what the individual organisms are doing in these populations. What I would like you to do is open up the digital model if you can and investigate what these different organisms are doing and also what are things that are happening to them. If you have access, this would be a great time to pause the video and if you'd like, to set up a data table on your paper, just like mine. If you don't have access, that's all right. You can follow along with me while we look at the digital model together. So like I said, we're gonna start with this three populations intro and jump right in. Now our task is to be observing what the individual organisms are doing or what is being done to them. So let's zoom in and take a look. I see there are some different types of organisms in the digital model. It looks like there's something called a green leaf, a wee bug, and a furble. What do we want to start with? Let's try this green leaf. Oh no, it looks like it's being eaten. Shoot, we'll have to pick another one. Let's try here. So this guy is reproducing it looks, and it's being eaten. It looks like by one of these wee bugs, these blue things, we can take a look. This is moving along. It was eating a second ago and it's reproducing. Now, something I noticed is these are reproducing together. Whereas when we clicked on that green leaf, it was reproducing by itself. That's kind of interesting. Oh, and being eaten again. If we zoom out a little. Maybe we can come over here and capture a fur bowl. 
Oh, also reproducing, reproducing. Again, meeting up. It looks kind of like the wee bugs were. Interesting. Oh no, and our furball died of old age. Let's take a look. Oh, another green leaf being eaten. I seem to be picking all the ones that are being eaten. More reproducing from the furbles, meaning that they're giving birth. They're eating, and I can't quite tell if that furble was eating a wee bug or a green leaf. Interesting. And they're definitely moving around. Well, if I zoom out, it's really obvious that the green leaves are staying in place. It seems like our wee bugs and our uh, furbles are mostly moving around. Interesting. I'm gonna pause right here. I feel like I've got some good evidence from looking in that digital model. So as I was working in the digital model, I was taking down some of my observations of what organisms were doing and what was being done to them. I noticed that a lot of the organisms were eating. It seemed like they were also moving around a lot, the furbles and the wee bugs, and they were reproducing. Something I noticed was that the green leaves seemed to reproduce on their own, while the wee bugs and the furbles were reproducing, they were meeting up and reproducing with something else. I noticed that different organisms seemed to die of old age, especially the ones that I was clicking on. But I also noticed that some organisms were being eaten by something else. It seemed like especially the green leaves I don't know that I saw any furbles being eaten, and I couldn't really tell if I saw wee bugs being eaten or whether the furbles were eating the green leaves, but I definitely saw some eating happening. It seems like something that we can say for sure is that within a population, organisms are always being born and always dying. Most of the time when I was clicking in the digital model, I saw reproduction happening, meaning giving births, or deaths, either by being eaten or dying from old age. This seems like a good place to start our investigations on our next lesson. If the moon jelly populations are increasing in size so quickly, what does this mean for the amount of births and deaths in the moon jelly population? This is where we're gonna go tomorrow and play a little game to figure out how this all works. I hope to see you back and I'm really excited to hear your continual thoughts as we continue along collecting our evidence to help our scientists figure out our question about the moon jellies. See you later.